In this video, we will be discussing how to use vernier graphical analysis to compute slopes of tangent lines. I'm assuming you've already watched the video and have learned how to create a graph like the one shown on the screen here. From here, we are going to learn how to use this graphical analysis tool to compute slopes of tangent lines and then use that data. Now, we know that the slope of a tangent line on a position versus time graph will tell you your velocity at that instant in time. So if I want to know how fast I'm going at t equals one second, I need to compute the slope of the tangent line to the graph at t equals one second. So let's first draw in a tangent line. The way we do that is click on the point of interest, and then you go down to the bottom left-hand corner here where you have some graph options. I will click that, and I will press the tangent button here. I can turn tangent lines on. There we go. And if I click out of this now, I can see that they've drawn a tangent line at one second, and it extends out pretty far. And I can see the slope of this tangent line is 2.67 meters per second. It computes the number value, and it tells you the units. The way it computes this unit is it takes your y-axis unit meters and divides by your x-axis unit seconds. I want to record this value, and so I'm going to go over to my data table and click the three dots next to where it says position. And I'm going to choose the add a manual column option. This manual column I will call velocity, which is measured in units of meters per second. Now I'll press apply. And now I'll look at this tangent line, 2.67 meters per second. That happens at time t equals one second, so I will click 2.67 and add it to my uh, data table here. So I now have the velocity, 2.67 seconds, at time t equals one second. And I'll remind you again that we got this tangent line just from this menu option and turning the tangent line slider on. Now from there we can find tangent lines at other points. You need at least one data point to the left to help compute the tangent. So we can't get the speed at t equals zero seconds. We can go over here to t equals one second. I can click on that data point. And you can see that the line, the tangent line to that curve gets steeper, and we expect a higher slope, and indeed we get a higher slope of 4.17 meters per second. I will now record that data point for the velocity that corresponds to time t equals two seven seconds. Or sorry, t equals two seconds. 4.17 meters per second of velocity. I can click the next data point. I can again see that the uh, tangent line gets steeper and its slope is 6.00 meters per second, so the speed, which corresponds to time t equals three seconds, must be 6.00 meters per second. I can click the next data point and do the same thing and see that I have a velocity of 2.83, or sorry, 7.83 meters per second at time t equals four seconds, and then at time t equals five seconds, I can see that I have a tangent line whose slope is 9.33 meters per second, and so the velocity at that time must be 9.33 seconds. And again, you need a data point to the left and to the right to do this calculation, and so I cannot use this tool to figure out the slope of the tangent line at t equals six seconds. And so you always have the beginning and velocity spot just being blank there. And so you have your uh, velocity data, and now you can use this data to make a line. And in fact, it's very easy to do. If I want a velocity versus time graph, where it says position on the y-axis here, I can just click on this. I can turn off the position data. I can turn on the velocity data, and it will have created for me a velocity versus time graph. Um, I can see that I need to go in here and retitle this now. So where I go to edit graph options, where it says velocity versus time. Um, my double check points are checked, lines and bars are off, and then my x-axis range always shows zero. My y-axis range always shows zero, and boom, there we go. We've got a graph of how the uh, fastness, the velocity, plus the direction, I'm in the positive direction here, that velocity changes as a function of time. Um, I can again apply a curve fit, um, just like we did with the position time data, by going to the graph options in the bottom left, and then apply curve fit, and I can see that a linear curve fit seems to fit this data pretty well. And so I click on this, move my box out of the way, and this graph would be ready to go uh, to upload into a 
Google Classroom Assignment or a Google Doc Lab Report. I'll remind you again, you can go up here, save your data with Save As, and use the Export button to export a PNG image of the graph, which is what I'm going to do here. Um, I look at this and see, ooh, my box gets cut off when I go to this option, and so I don't like that, actually. I'm going to go ahead and move this over here, see if that fixes things. And we'll try again, export. Oh, that again, cut off, not perfect. Let's try it over here a little bit. Top left menu, export. There we go. I think I'm going to settle. Well, it's, I don't like that it's covering up a data point. So let's actually go ahead and drag it a little bit more here. A little bit of trial and error. There we go. I can see all of the numbers in this box. I can see my line. I can see the data points. Excellent. All of this looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and press Save PNG image. Now I can upload, I'm going to name this Velocity Time Graph Glider, save it in my downloads, and now I'm ready to go. And that's how you create a Velocity Time Graph using the Tangent tool in Vernier Graphical Analysis.